outside um, in division in their division uh, in third place, and also they got a their 11 and 9 winning record. Also, they're on the winning streak. Four games in a row. The night could be five. Who knows? First time since '92, the Hounds have been over 500. One of the big keys, Drew Cooper, the sophomore. Hey, Drew Cooper, I think we talked about him earlier. They've been on our color cast about three times prior to this one, and he didn't have a, as much high school basketball experience, but he's coming to his own. He, he's a leading scorer, a leading rebounder. He's doing it all for this team, and he's been a big contributor. What if he asked us to look at him? Hot on the surface, not a great record, but this program is in the process of at least trying to turn some heads. Well, I think the last time they had any type of significance in the process was back in the 87-88 season when they won the championship. But now, as you just mentioned, they're moving up to Division One. They're getting out of two, and they're expecting big things. They got a first-year coach. A lot of things are happening for them, so they're excited. And they defeated the Hounds by five points when the two teams met back in January. The rematch comes tonight, and it comes live right here on Channel 3. Assumption and Quinnipiac, the tip-off. Visit Millbury Ford Mercury today and test drive the new Ford Windstar or Mercury Villager, comfortable and clean up the entire family. Or sit behind the wheel of the versatile Ford Explorer or durable Ranger. Millbury Ford Mercury also has 96 and 97 F-150s, the best-selling truck in America. Hurry, they won't last. Millbury Ford Mercury, where one price, no hassles, makes buying your next new car or truck easier than you think. We've got a reason to celebrate. National Anthem Monitoring America, and we are set to go here at Alaska Gymnasium. The uh, first 20 minutes of play in the uh, first half, the Greyhounds and the Quinnipiac Braves. And as we mentioned in the open, Ernie, reason to be excited around these parts. The Hounds are over 500 at 11 and 9, 8 and 5 in the NE10. Hey, they're working really hard, and uh, it comes down to coaching, and it comes down to commitment, and it comes down to people believing in the, t in the staff, and the also the support from from the school, and it's all come together and it's definitely paid off. Take a look at the starting lineups. Uh, some of the guys to watch, Joe Tremarkey, probably the leading scorer in that lineup for Quinnipiac and then for Assumption. Coming off the bench, the group of the leading scorer and rebounder still for Quinnipiac. Their leading scorer and rebounder all comes off the bench. And the person of the Miles and it's bring for the tip wearing the blue uniforms, left and right. TV screen, that's Rich Johnson, the point guard out of Orleans, Mass, with it, and tipped away by Andy Nitwicki. Trying to set the tone, man-to-man -to -man pressure, and uh, that was a good breakup right there. Established themselves on defense. 
Michael Beerworth, one of the tri captains, in there starting. He's normally a reserve. This is Ryan Brown in the post over Kurt Hold off the glass for two. Quinnipiac, the first lead of the night. A good post move down low. He's known as the team's most valuable inside player. He just demonstrated that down low. Soft touch inside. Used the glass that time, but he also can uh, get a little softer if he wants to. Hold matches, so we're tied at two out of South Africa. Kurt Hold. Kurt Hold looking stronger and stronger in that post position. He's getting comfortable down there. Bearworth losing the dribble. Get it back out to Johnson. They swing it around now. Ryan has baseline. He's sealed off. Yeah, kicking their time. Trying to get some perimeter offense going. But of course, they like to go down low. Ryan Brown is the guy. 6'7", junior. Center. Bearworth just inside the arc. He is short. Rebound assumption. Miller in transition. Melvin will pull off the nail. Good there, bringing it down the court. He's capable of doing that. That particular time, the senior guard out of Memphis, Tennessee. And court pressure from the house. Braves break it though, launch from three from Markey, the leading three point shooter at 40%, misses it, rebound on Eliapes. Here's Brown looking for two more. Wild in the shot, rebound on the far side, jump ball call, possession to Assumption. Uh, going back to Assumption, they try to get out on the break as quick as they can on the defensive side this particular time. Uh, Brown going a little wild there, out of control, and um, Assumption gets the ball. Pressure from Columbia, just like token pressure in the backcourt. Brock Erickson out of Wachusett High School, a transfer from the URI, running the point right now for the Greyhounds. Hands off the hole, back out to Krause, the senior is the three-pointer. We'll speak with Brett Krause in a special halftime interview. He has his team up 7-2. Wow, the biology made a major hit to hit three. I think they're, they're three, three for three coming out. They're looking good, they're looking comfortable, they're looking confident. And uh, unfortunately, one of their most aggressive players in versatile play is sitting on the bench there. Steve St. Martin. It's been uh, battling an injury, an upper body bruise near his shoulder. He'll sit outside, miss the game. Hounson will definitely miss his presence. Quinnipiac, hold from the field, down 5, 7 to 2. 17 45 to play first half. Johnson looking good in the opener, but of course, Quinnipiac wants to come with a quick pressure, trying to turn things over, and they do that. They get a turnover on Assumption. Quinnipiac, one of five from the field so far. Assumption, meanwhile, perfect at three of three. Lead pass up ahead. Johnson trying to track it down. Turnover on the Braves. Assumption to get it back. That's ball just a few minutes ago, by the way. First of the game went on Krause. Well, Quinnipiac, any chance they like, uh, opportunity they may uh, come their way, they like to run the ball as well. Andy Nitzwicki from Stockton High School with it. Goes up to Erickson, two vocal products. Rousey, feeling it from three. Bingo, he's got six points. Assumption 10 as a team. Wow, big shot there. Assumption looking very impressive in the open going. Shot looked really good, and it fell for him. Inside crowd, muscling over Miller. Melvin called for the personal. Melvin Miller mixing it up down low. One of the few big bodies that Assumption possesses out there as Quinnipiac goes down low to the big man. And he's starting to operate down in the paint, but Melvin Miller has some other ideas. Ryan Brown's going to get an opportunity to go down there, and um, he's their big go-to guy. He's a junior. He's the center. Went to uh, Watertown High School. Also plays baseball, one of the star pitchers for the Braves come the springtime. Two shots, makes the first. Third point for Quinnipiac. It's a 10-3 game. First of the night for Brown. Make that third of the night for Brown. He has all three of their points. Gets both. Leads at a half dozen now. Quinnipiac. Doing some transitional defense. Changing things up with some high pressure. And it works. Another assumption turnover. Assumption didn't come up prepared for that. They uh, took the ball out of bounds very slowly. And Quinnipiac took advantage of it. Being at second year coach Serge DeBarry working wonders here in Alaska. The Lazarus of Alaska, I call him, raising this program from the dead. He continues to do a great job of it. Now 11 and 9 here in his second season. Well, he was a star here at one time under Coach O'Brien, of course, the president of the Basketball Hall of Fame. Backworth to Byworth. We've been a 10 game, 4 0 run from Quinnipiac. Assumption will hold on to it. 
You mentioned him here, Ernie. Coach DeBarry told you he didn't expect to be over 500 in season two. No, but he's very pleased about it, and uh, he's very, and not only that, he, you're right, he is very surprised, and uh, he'll take it, though, but it shows a good sign of patience and hard work to get good. Quinnipiac is putting on the tight pressure. First time they're causing the Assumption to have some problems. Erickson will can the two-point time. Assumption double up Quinnipiac at 12 to 6, 16 to 15 to go in the first half. Well, that's a nice shot by Brock Erickson, keeping this cool of sophomore out of Holden Mass with the Washington, Washington High School. And uh, Assumption's been looking really cool on offense. We get a five-second call, I believe. Good defense from Andy Nitzwicki forcing the call. Rich Johnson couldn't find someone to get it to. Nitzwicki doing a great job on defense. Even has that knee brace there. Uh, doesn't seem as if it's been hampering him on defense as much. Nitzwicki graduated from nearby Sutton High School two years ago. Went to Worcester Academy to prep for a season, but had an ACL injury, a knee injury, had to miss the whole year. That's why he wears the brace. Turnover to Quinnipiac. Braves get it back, down 12-6. Well, we had opportunity to see a play a couple of times, but uh, he's been putting in some outstanding performances with the team. He's been complimenting the, the front, the backcourt very well. Fairworth right on the stripe. That's a two-pointer. Foot was just That's inside the line. Good. He has four, as does Brown. It's a 12-8 game, assumption up by four. Well, Michael Fairworth brings heart and desire to the basketball team. He's senior six foot forward. In that particular time, wasn't challenged on the offense, but he was able to stick that shot. Fairworth is shooting 64% from the field. Hasn't seen a lot of opportunities so far this year, but got the start tonight. And with that gaudy 64% from the field. Here's a shot at Kurt Hole. Kurt Hole's been uh, coming out in the early going, catching the ball uh, on the fly and posting himself down low, being strong. As you see there, um, the quickie Andy comes out of the game. Drew Cooper in the game, no leading score and rebounder as the Brown skies for the rebound. In there with Cooper also, Josh Zelke, number 44. Stop and pop, off the mark, rebound of something that was live there for the baseline attempt. Great job by Assumption by getting back on defense. Fairworth is going to pick it off. Assumption a little sloppy on offense. They've had a number of turnovers here in the first five minutes. Well, the big man was able to come around the top and uh, make a steal there. He's one of three senior try captains here uh, on that team. Fairworth at the free throw line. It's Johnson, he'll cut in and hit the ground. Short attempt as he goes up, is tipped away. He'll keep control of it, though. Something's been very alive on defense, but that particular time, they're leaving their players open. Chris Johnson, great defender, and also getting it done offensively on that play. It's a one-point game. That was a three-pointer for Rich Johnson. He's a tough, smart, fundamentally sound player, and that particular time, Sloan was in his draft, and he had nothing much to do but to pile up long distance and knock it down. Erickson is going to get charged with the offensive foul as Ryan Brown held his position. Mark Erickson is trying to create some offense. This is the lane. But Ryan Brown stays safe there. He goes up. And uh, Brock, one of those particular times, if you're a guard, come down and do a jump stop and go straight up. That particular time, his body carried into, into Ryan. Coming up on the 14 minute mark, half number one. Assumption in Quinnipiac live on Channel 3. Glad you could join us. Assumption in that tight man-to-man defense. Tremarkey with a 17-footer. Bingo, Quinnipiac in the lead, 13-12. Uh, I think they're starting to heat up. Uh, Joe Tremarkey, the junior guard, he's one of the NE's 10 best perimeter players. He demonstrated that on the baseline with a nice touch. Leading scorer for the team last year, second this year to Miles Anderson, who we've yet to see. He comes off the bench. Rousey from deep, his third three of the night battles home from about 25. Wow, he went real long. This is that he changed the area code on his shot. They were able to knock that one down. The Hounds being impressive on offense. They don't jump on defense except the fact that they're not challenging the jump shot. The jump shooter. For Markey turning that cross, he passes off the red self with the rebound and tapped away. What a, what a shooting performance for Assumption in the early going. It's been a good one so far. 13.02 to play first half. Assumption leading Quinnipiac 15 to 13. An official timeout on the floor. We're back with more after this. 
Yes, Dudley? I'm starving. Can we have a snack, Mom? Here's your snack, kids. Cheese, fruits, and I chopped up some carrot sticks. Thanks. What? No candy? No chewy gooey carbs? Eating too many snacks can cause tooth decay. But if you need a snack between meals, choose nutritious foods like fruits, vegetables, or cheese. I'm proud of these 242 teeth. That's why I'm eating nutritious food. That's right. Eat up, kids. Yay! About seven minutes into the first half of play from Alaska Jim. John Holt and Ernie Floyd with you. 15 to 13. Assumption is leading Quinnipiac by two. You take a look at Drew Cooper in the game, number 42 out of Kentucky. Any 10 co-player of the week, averaged uh, 25.5 points and 12 rebounds last week. Career high 36 versus Merrimack. That guy can really heat up. Well, he definitely did that, but why? The whole team right now is heating up and collectively, and they've been able to knock down some threes, get some inside play. But you know something? Quinnipiac is sneaking back up, slowly but surely. Quinnipiac was down at 1.126. They're now down to 15-13. Froin trying to get two more for the Hounds. Can't do it. Zelke the fuck. Oh, 17-13 assumption. Now shooting seven of nine from the field so far. 77%. Josh Zelke coming to his first year. Six four forward out of Dallas, Texas. Communication major did a good job there. Here's Miles Anderson who we spoke about. He's off the bench. This is his first shot for the Braves. Hounds on a little run, they were down 13-12. And there's a steal, taken away Tremarkey, finger roll in, cutting the lead to two. Yeah, Tremarkey, the junior guard, doing a great job. He's the team primary outside weapon. That time he took it to the length of the court and laid it in. Rousey saving it in the corner to Zelke, wide open underneath, Drew Cooper off the glass. Oh, Drew Cooper had all day. I thought he was going to tear the rim down, but he was kind to the rim. <laughs> We have a full ball game here, Ernie so still early. Was never that kind to the rim. Never. Hurt the rim whenever possible. The auto to live by. Don't find a quick trap. I have been spot number three. Out at Lyapes. Consistent shooting guard. Yeah. Fifth year try captain, the senior Lyapes has his team within one at 19-18. Oh, both teams have been firing it from the outside around the perimeter. Got to contest those jump shooters. It's Wicky shooting for the first time tonight. Short off the rim. Out of bounds, but Kirk got the hand on it. Hounds will keep it, 11.24 to go. Overall, both teams, Assumption is fifth right now in reference to the conference play, and the Quinnipiac is, uh, is in eighth position. But as, as I mentioned, actually, Assumption is in three-way tie with St. Anselm and also Bentley. That means Wicky missed three-pointer, the first missed three of the night for the Hounds. They had been three of three, all compliments of Brett Krause. Now three of four, 75% after Andy is fired. Both teams are playing pretty evenly, even though Quinnipiac beat Assumption back in January. And I'm pretty sure Assumption has not forgotten about that. This is Cooper from the corner. He doesn't hit a thing. That's an uncharacteristic shot by Drew Cooper. Keep it in the hands of Brett Krause at this point. He's not in the game, but get him back in there the way he was shooting. Whistle away from the basketball, he'll get a foul. Gonna go against Quinnipiac, send it the other way. Number 32, I believe. Well, Quinnipiac right now is, uh, is lost two in a row. And uh, Assumption, of course, has won four in a row, looking for their uh, fifth win tonight in a row. And Assumption is just above 500. Lyle Pitts looking up to follow his first team second. Miller thinking about the three from the corner. The dishes it to this wiki, tries to get it inside the point, out of bounds. Hounds will keep it 21 seconds in the front block. Some tough passing out there by the Hounds. They're trying to establish some inside-outside game. They've proven that they can shoot the shot from the outside. Now they're trying to create some inside play. And Quinny PX is doing a tough job, quick job actually, by playing tight in the paint area. They're tight in the man fan defense. And it's Wiki pulling up. Missing again. And he's touched it off. There comes Johnson in transition. He'll pull it back with his teammates. One point game, it's a good one so far. So we got back to the team. had an opportunity to run the basketball that time, but of course, Assumption got back on defense. Miles Anderson is first two games. He averages 14 4 a game. A redshirt transfer from Franklin Pierce, 20 19, breaks up one. 
Well, they're really pleased with him. With him. He just over his overall game. He's extremely a hard worker. And that time he was working hard down low at the post area. Ball on put it back. Third hole's gonna have to earn his points down low. And uh, Quinny Jack's gonna make up work for it, especially Miles Anderson. That foul one on Andrew McKenzie, wearing number 33 in blue, his first, team's third. Under 10 minutes now, 20 to 19, Braves ahead. Something with a basketball home. Hold inside immediately double team. This is where cutting Miller swatted away by Tremonti from behind. With force right into the cheerleaders. Watch out. Watch out, duck. Get out the way. Bring your own hoop. Check this out. Down low. Nice passing. Cutting Miller. And uh, cheerleaders are ducking and saying, whoa, I, I want to be part of the game, but not that way. As you notice down low, it's really tough. Quinnipiac is doing a good job in the paint area, causing some traffic. An assumption has not been able to uh, really penetrate that zone that they have down there. And on the swat, they did get a foul on that play. And Miles Anderson, his first team's fourth. Two shots for Melvin Miller, missed the first. Chance to tie things at 20, though, if he can drop in the second. But at the same time, uh, Assumption has just been able to uh, get the uh, offensive rebound right there. Cooper with the board doesn't go though on the putback attempt. Tremarkey pulling up from three. Short, Cooper on the rebound. Yeah, trying to show that they can run, trying to put some points up uh, early on a quick run. Baseline, loses his real estate and steps to the end line. We probably have to say, John, what happened? It seems so. Uh, Assumption came out firing, and uh, Quinnipiac just slipped back into the game, and all of a sudden they're leading by one. They do. 20 to 19, 9.28 to go, half number one. Backcourt pressure from Assumption. Third in bounce pass, and then back it off. Rich Johnson running the point. He sometimes plays as much as 38, 39 minutes a game. Real warrior out there. Fairworth fakes the three, drives in the paint. There's a witch in foul. Got to go against the assumption, Melvin Miller. And if it's against Melvin, that'll be his second. It is second personal on Melvin Miller. Fourth team foul on assumption. Well, sometimes Melvin Miller is prone to fouls because he's always around the area where the action is. And uh, sometimes he gambles and he goes for steals. And he's one of those prone foulers. Anderson spinning. On hold, he'll toss it in over him. Three-point lead for Quinnipiac. I think Krause strong to the hole. He has 11. That's right, Krause, more than half of his team points. Hey, something like that. He's unconscious. Great Krause is coming in, doing the job. Andrew McKenzie was a part-time starter last season. He spins it around all the way to Fairworth at the other end. His shot off the mark. Now he's going to go back ahead now. Give it a Krause. That's my strategy at this point. There you go. There's a streaking, slashing Miller. He'll get a second chance. Persistence looking for chance three. Doesn't get that, though. Got to hit one of the first two, Melvin. Well, Melvin was sliding in there, and uh, he's one of the most aggressive players. He's a junior. Plays that small forward position off guards. He's able to get in there, get a slinky body in there, trying to muscle up. And uh, just missing those baby trippers. Those are the kind you got to put down. Unfortunately, he goes out of bounds. And he needs Wiki to the bench. Derek Thompson, one of the captains, along with Brett Krause, is into the game. And a carrying violation on Tremarkey. Assumption will get it back, stop, stopping the clock at 8.22 here in the first half. Fourth turnover for the Braves in half one. They lead it 22 to 21. Well, this is a good opportunity. That was a big break for Assumption. Now they can try to make up, possibly Melvin Miller or somebody to try, to try to get those easy two points back. Rousey getting caught underneath the backboard virtually. It'll go to Quinnipiac. How pretty ugly how that happened. <laughs> a little bit a little too far, a little too deep. Whistle and a foul underneath. Derek Thompson was in the mix. He may be guilty, or perhaps Seth Freund. Quinnipiac gets the ball up so quickly, sometimes trying not to allow Assumption, of course, to get back on defense. But Derek Thompson that time got caught in the act with the hack, the senior off guard out of uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. Two shots for Andrew McKenzie at the line. First foul of the night on Thompson, five team fouls. Now Assumption has been a relatively quick first half. Eight minutes to play, now a two-point lead for Quinnipiac at 23. 21. 
Kenzie, the sophomore out of Queensbury, New York, 6'3", 175, averaging just about two points a game. And has won so far tonight as he misses the second. Thompson is open on the break. The Sumption wasting little time, tying it up at 23. That's what you do, you try to capture her, and then all of a sudden they try to put on a little press. I have wide open at all day, maybe too much time to think about it. Contact underneath, a foul against Quinnipiac. Andrew McKenzie gets caught with the uh, push up. The ball got pushed up so fast by both teams. This is a shot by Nick. Nick lets it go from the corner for three point land. Doesn't get anything. As you can see down low, this is the push off. And uh, Andrew McKenzie got called for it. Brock Erickson running the show in the game along with Derek Thompson, Melvin Miller, Brett Krause, and Seth Roy. Trying to fake his defender. Now dishes to Miller. There's Erickson. And good attempt. Good attempt, but he has it tapped away. Freud keeps it alive. Now Thompson launching. Off the backboard, doesn't drop. Hey, when in doubt, shoot it. That's what I always say. <laughs> that thing of time seems as though Assumption was in a nice flow of rhythm, and all of a sudden it just suddenly broke down. Miles Anderson, strong move inside. He will uh, draw the foul. Miles Anderson, your prototypical power forward with his size, 6'6", 215 out of Hamden. Real strong, muscular player. Well, you got the small forward going against the power forward, and who's going to win that one? Melvin Miller is holding his own, but he's putting himself into some foul trouble in the early going, so of course he's going to have to sit down. Number three on Miller, game ball number six, an assumption. Two shots. Miles Anderson at the strike, game knotted up at 23-23. Well, John, this is the gentleman, of course, that red shirt and transferred from Franklin Pierce, and he's quoted by saying, uh, why you're attending Quinnipiac? Well, because he likes the atmosphere and is close to home. Yeah. That <laughs> makes me want to transfer, too. You got it. I think he is from Hammond, Connecticut, exactly where Quinnipiac is located, the campus. Second Cousins, by the way, to Lenny Wilkins, the legendary NBA coach who also coached the Dream Team. Gets him a good blood, basketball blood in his family. Okay, he has some NBA connection there. Anderson making one of two, it's 24-23 now. One point lead for the Braves. Freud trying to put the Hounds back up. Rebound loose. This is Drew Cooper, muscling his way. Backing his way into the defender, then up and in. I tell you, Quinn Jack been tough in the paint area, crowding the big people. I'm telling you, you're gonna have to earn it down low. And that time they did. Anthony Saunders with the basketball. He's out of eight, Massachusetts. Good defender, just a freshman for this Quinnipiac team. Johnson, played right by Erickson, has it tipped away. Anderson will his ball up with it as he falls down, no good. Just goes to Cooper. Credit assumption, sticking there on defense and commanding the defensive board. Erickson goes up, short 12 footer. That doesn't drop. 25 24, Hounds with one, about six minutes to go in the first half. If you're just joining us, Steve St. Martin, the heart and soul of this assumption team, not playing tonight with a bruise, a serious bruise. Very shoulder. Everybody, he's on the back. We're going to fall, I think, on Seth Throwing as Anderson was working with it in the box. One, the rest of the half bonus situation for the Braves the rest of the way here in half one. Well, that's a nice battle down there. You got Seth Bryan, who's about 6'6", and about 240, and uh, going to get the big man, Miles Anderson, 6'6", and 215. Bryan's going to take a seat. That was his first personal. Well, Miller pulled into the game. Well, Melvin Miller had the earlier assignment, and he had to sit down. <laughs> now, Seth had the assignment, and he has to sit down. Anderson frustrated after missing the front end of the one and one and remains a one point lead for Assumption. Five lead changes so far in this one. Two ties and Quinnipiac has it back looking to make another lead change after the steal. Good hands by Miles Anderson, They're able to get into the passing lane. Anderson at least steps on the baseline. We've got a timeout on the floor, 5.34 to play, half one. 25-24, Assumption leading Quinnipiac by one. Back with more action after this. Cadillac, creating a higher standard. 
Baker Cadillac Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. Demand better. Baker Cadillac Oldsmobile. Hi, I'm Joel Baker. For a great deal on a brand new Cadillac, Oldsmobile, or a good quality used vehicle, come see us here at Baker Cadillac Oldsmobile. We're only 18 minutes from Worcester. Baker Cadillac Oldsmobile, routes 2 and 13, Lemonster. Coming yeah, up at halftime, an interview with that red-hot uh, shooter from the first half, Brett Krause, as well as halftime stats and first half highlights. I sort of teased, you know, right in that interview, I said, you know, you're, you're known for your defense. You think it ever overshadows your offense? Well, he came out and made a statement in the first half about his offense. Three three-pointers and uh, two more from the field, total of 11. And he knew he was on channel three. And also, look at you. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Under five and a half to go, first half, 25-24, assumption up one. Going to be at man to man, going to live on defense, actually in their inner zone. They're extending that zone because Assumption has proven that they can hit that perimeter shot. That's what you do, man. They like switching defenses. Rousey points 12 and 13. What a burst of speed. Wow, he exploded. Sharp into the back. He slashed, and now Assumption put on a quick press of their own. They like to change up on the defenses. Sometimes they go full court, sometimes they go half court. Man-to-man -man defense from the Hounds. Be inside, Ryan Brown needs a He swipes him accidentally on the way by, but Andy is guilty of the foul. Well, of course, this is a young team, and as you can see, Quinnipiac is trying to operate inside. Tough defense by assumption, and also, they want the big men to earn their shots down there as well. They're not giving away anything easy. Eight team falls on assumption, so the pace is slowing down. The Braves take the trips to the line. He's going to get two in this case, not a one-on-one -one situation. Ryan Brown making the first. 27-25, now we've got a two-point game. Brown started hot, had the first three points for Quinnipiac. There's a total of six now. It's 27-26, Hounds up one with the basketball. Wow, Quinnipiac showing that they can go full court, try to do some traps. Both teams are pretty much playing evenly. They like to switch up on the defenses, uh, switch up on the offensive. And uh, that's why the score is so close. Let's see who breaks out. Salki missing, but it was a beautiful pass to Kurt Hold instead. Good heads up play by the front court man, Kurt Hold. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden something now. They're trying to put a little press of their own. And they'll steal it down the other side. Cooper up ahead to Krause. That basket looks like super big to him at this point. His eyes light up when he has a free path to the hoop. He wants to go to the basket. He's not going to run the offense. <laughs> Doesn't drop in, but Brett does earn a trip to the free throw line. Playing in a zone here in the first half. He's definitely in the zone. It gotta, it's got to be the shoes or something. This guy is going to be the ball uh, on the uh, beginning of the fast break. He was just going to the basket. You can see it in his eyes. He's trying to create something for himself, and he did, and now he's going to get a chance to go to the line. 16 ball on Quinnipiac. Assumption one away from the bonus with 4.06 to play in the half. 29-26, Krause with two upcoming. Chance to make it a five-point edge, pushing to a handful. As Assumption looks for its 12th win of the season, ninth in conference in the Northeast 10. Well, BK here is trying to have it his way. He's trying to do it all. He's out of racing in Wisconsin. He's a biology major here at Assumption. He's trying to dissect this team, of course. Makes one of two. He has two touchdowns worth of points and the extra points. 14 total for Grassi. 13 of his team's 30. Hounds up 30 to 26. Patches going to go back toward it for Markey. Quinnipiac's going to hold on to it as Krause apparently got a hand on it, according to the officials. It was a nice backdoor play that particular time, but unfortunately it went off for assumption, so now Quinnipiac gets the ball back as Joe Tremarkey got a streak on uh, the baseline. It's a bad patch, and that's going to go off Krause battling patch and forward and backward. It's not a violation of the backward. Ball's thrown in an inbounded situation. Shot clock, though, does not get reset, so it's at 18 as it goes into Miles Anderson. Braves with 15 seconds out of work on with the shot clock. Trump has been doing a pretty decent job on defense this half, giving Quinnipiac all kind of fits. For marking off the screen, Bill Kevin Murray 
One point game, 30 to 29. Tremarkey, 40% of the season from three. Wow, he's the outside threat. Joe Tremarkey. He's looking for the foul, too. He got bumped at the end. He says, hey, can I get the extra? Up in this piece. And his referee's like, no, that's how you're going to give you. 17 ball on the Braves. The first one going against Rich Johnson is first of the night. One and one situation. Rest of the half for the Hounds. 40 to 29 right now. Greyhounds up a point. It's Whitney trying to earn a second shot. Can make the first? Yes, he can. My uh, recollections of Andy Bidzwicki in high school are most vivid from the Clark High School tournament where he always used to light up the schools with a small school division. That's a great story tournament that starts again this Sunday. Sutton is always one of the teams to watch. Andy's all the monitor as he makes one of two. Third one, 29. Boy, digging down. Digging down dirty and deep on the defense. Race and all. Doesn't seem like it's hampering in his performance. When you play in that tight, sometimes Quinnipiac can take advantage of going back door. They tried that a couple of times. Liapez, short, Nick Liapez, hold all night so far. Double teamed on Patchy. This way is for Markey, he'll pull up, 17 footer, no good, Cooper the rebound. Assumptions leading rebounder, Drew Cooper just under 10 a game, grabs another tonight. Oh, nice lob pass. Oh! And Miles Anderson, I think he should get credit for that. He'll give it a card hole, but it looked like what if he acted in his own basket. Kurt Hole had the target hand out there. Didn't make it, but with the help of Miles. Watch out, Tremarkey from three again, making it a one-point game. He's starting to heat up. I tell you, last year he led the team in scoring, having about 13 steals. It's about two a game. Tremarkey had doubled it, returning with 10 points now. Hold for two more. Kurt Hole, that's a hold on the Quinnipiac defense. And it's just starting to heat up here. Now something going full forward with the press again. What a great havoc for this Quinnipiac team. Both teams are still playing pretty much even, though. They're still exchanging points on and both ends. No one really has really clamped down and uh, created a, a, a series of stops. Anderson, easy pass to the Anderson, Anderson. 35-34. Wow, he played at the same high school that produced Charlotte Hornets uh, guard Scott Burrell. And that time, boy, he showed some strength going to the basket. Now Andy Nitzwicki from three comes up a little bit late, limping after the basket. Hopefully it's not his uh, knee. Uh, I saw him grabbing his ankle, but boy, I hope it's not his knee. He's been putting in a great performance, huh? Assumption's gonna get a quick timeout, I believe. It is of the 22nd variety. Yes, it is. Hounds lead at 38-34. Nitzwicki being attended, by, attended to by Susie Lasowitz, the trainer. For Assumption College, and let's watch his wiki can the three. He's up to four points now, and well, this guy has been definitely doing it. And uh, from the outside area, he dials it up. Boy, makes the connection there. He even got some internet net there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's part of the 1,000 point club, of course, at Sutton High School. Actually, third on the list, and uh, with the, he's first with assists with the 865 back in high school. Captain is a junior and a senior. MVP is a senior. 24 and 1, his team went and lost the state title game, though. He yeah, averaged about 9 points, 19 points a game, and 10 rebounds in high school. 38 34, 4 point lead for the Hounds. Coming up on the final minute of play, Anderson is off the mark, gets his own rebound, second chance, no good again. Bear worth the tip into the hands of Drew Cooper. Hey, something's showing that they gave him that play. He had some hard time down low on the low point in the paint area. I'm telling you, the big people have to work hard both teams. No one's getting them easy down there. This is an even game in more ways than one, obviously, on the scoreboard. 38-34, close one, and both teams are up 52% from the field at the time. This is a big game for Assumption. Now, they're coming in here with a, a four-game running streak. they got some uh, pride going, some confidence, and they're both 500, and they're at home. So they got to take this game. It's not doing as well this year, so they should be able to come in here and steal this one. Four second differential, shot clock in the game clock. 18 seconds left in half one. Olympiac will work for a late shot, but they'll have to get it off before the, uh, the game clock does run out. This is Johnson canning it. 
the final seconds of the first half, Krause launching a prayer off the mark. Hounds lead it at the half, though, 38-36. How about that? Over 500 and leading it here at Channel 3 and at the half. Barry's taking something with you. Still not happy. That guy uh, wants the gold. He wants everything. Really <laughs> committed to rebuilding this program. We're back with halftime activities on Channel 3 right after this assumption. 38, Quinnipiac, 36 and a half. Hi, I'm Gates McFadden. And I'm Michael Dorn. On Star Trek The Next Generation, I play Dr. Beverly Crusher. Computer Emergency Entry, Chief Medical Officer Beverly Crusher. I play Worf, the Klingon. Worf to Enterprise. Go ahead, sir. Beam me up. Our movie's special effects are light years ahead of the original televised Star Trek. But we both share the same vision of the future where education and advancing technology have dramatically improved human and alien life throughout the galaxies. Education can improve your life, too. You'll have a positive future filled with opportunities. So stay in school and graduate. Engage. This message brought to you by the U.S. Air Force, because we know the value of a good education. You've seen this storefront many times. It's Ken Jones Tires. What you may not know is this. We have the largest selection and variety of tires in central New England. If you're looking for a lawnmower tire, we have it. If you're looking for a passenger tire or a farm tire, we have that too, and everything in between. Our whole business is tires, not tune-ups or oil changes, just tires. Find out for yourself why New England comes to Ken Jones Tires for their tire needs. Ken Jones Tires, Chandler Street, Worcester. Looking for a new truck, sport, or utility vehicle? Look no further. Edward Buick GMC Truck is one of New England's most respected GMC truck dealers. Get the big advantage. Edward Buick GMC Truck will give you the most generous trade-in allowance, greatest lease program, and the best financing. No money down with your good credit. Stop in today and see one of our helpful salespeople or ask for Brad Day, GMC Truck Manager, for the best deal on a new GMC truck. Edward Buick GMC Truck. 72 Shrewsbury Street, Worcester. Welcome back to halftime of tonight's game between Assumption and Quinnipiac. We are joined by one of the uh, Hound Strike captains, Brett Krause, the senior. And Brett, you maybe more than anyone know all about this program, the ups and downs. Your first year, you guys didn't win a ball game. Second year, you won one game. This year, over 500. Does that feel good to finally be on the plus side of things? Oh, yeah, it's a great feeling. Kind of frustrating first two years, and even last year was a little frustrating, and it uh, just feels great to finally come out ahead. Now, this program has plenty of tradition, uh, obviously. Take a look at some of the banners here in the gymnasium. You came here from Wisconsin. What attracted you to the program? How did you get connected to Worcester, Massachusetts? And then, two, when you got here, were you disappointed to realize things may not have been what they, they used to be in terms of the program struggling? Uh, yeah, well, Coach Rankins, being from Wisconsin, uh, attracted me to the program. And uh, eventually, you know, I was a little frustrated, like I said, with the way things were going. But I just kept my head up and tried to, you know, fight through it. And now, after a transition with the different coaches, I, I feel we're on the right track. The program's on its way up here. Could anyone, not anyone per se, but could any average coach have come in and, and turn this program around? Or what has Coach DeBerry done that's special to, to make this turnaround work? Um, I guess he just really can relate with the players. Uh, gets us all to go out there every night, play hard, practice hard every day, and they just have a relentless attitude on the court. And I think we all have seemed to be on the same page as a group and as a unit this year. I think that's really uh, helping us out. How has your approach changed as a captain? You're one of the few guys in this program that's been a three-year captain. This is your third year. This is actually my second year. Second year as yes. a captain? So this is your second year as being a captain. You've been through some of the tougher times. Has your approach changed at all with Coach DeBarry and sort of in, in people's maybe spirits being up a little bit? Or what do you do differently as a captain? Um, I guess we just try to keep our heads up even uh, when we face adversity. Uh, we've been down a few games and we fought hard in the second half to come back. And I think uh, sometimes the players will look to, to the three captains when we're down and just, you know, our attitude and us playing real hard 
you know, helps pick them up and as a team just drive forward. What's the confidence level at now? Doing well in conference, above 500 overall, and uh, you know this is the team that they bill as assumption is the team nobody wants to play come March. That may hold true at this point. Yeah, yeah we uh, we don't want to be too confident, but I think uh, we have a good confidence level as far as you know when we face uh, adversity early in the game. You know we don't put throw in the towel. We just uh, you know kind of regroup, maybe in a timeout, and uh, just keep playing hard, and hopefully we come out on top. What are your perceptions of the Northeast and uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, the Northeast 10, Assumption? You came in from Wisconsin, probably didn't know much about the school before coming here, and now you've been here for four years. How's it gone for you? Uh, I've uh, enjoyed the overall experience. As far as the Indy 10 is concerned, there's just uh, kind of a lot of upsets. It just seems like it's just a great league to be in. So anything can happen. And how about your game personally? Obviously, uh, we know about your offensive exploits because you seem to get real streaky at times, cans and threes, but your specialty may be defense. You're the guy they want to match up with one of the top scorers ever had the the top score from the other team. Yeah, lately uh, I've been assigned to try to shut down their, their top scorers, and uh, I kind of get lucky because I don't have to help out as much. I just strictly uh, kind of I'm going towards one man. Sure. It helps out a lot. And with, with the supporting cast of the team helping me around the picks and the communication, I think uh, you know we I've uh, been able to shut down a few guys this year and help us out. A lot of young kids may not be interested in defense if they're playing like youth basketball. How did you get that reputation as a defensive player? Um, I don't know. I just kind of enjoy just going out with setting the goal, saying I want to want to stop this guy or I want to outplay this guy defensively tonight, and it's just kind of gets an attitude inside, like maybe a personal accomplishment. I want to uh, get it every game. How balanced is your game? Is the offensive part of your game the frosting on your defense, or do you like to think you, ha you have weapons on both sides? Uh, I like to think I have weapons on both sides, but a lot of times, you know, you can have a bad shooting night, but you really shouldn't have a bad defensive night. You know, if you have that uh, attitude and you're real aggressive and playing real hard on defense, a lot of times things on offense will just tend to happen. Do you keep in touch with the Coach Rankins? I know he still uh, works here locally. He obviously was a Wisconsin connection for you. And do you ever talk to him at all? Or Actually, I haven't talked to him in a while. Uh, I've talked to Coach Esposito a few times on the phone to see how he's doing. But how about being from Wisconsin? You get a lot of flack from your teammates, especially on the Super Bowl. <laughs> Were you the cheesehead on the team? Oh, yeah, I was the cheesehead, but I was glad the Packers came out on top. <laughs> And how about your future? I know that you're a great student in the classroom with a QM, I believe, about 3.5, right around 3.5, major in biology. You'd possibly like to do some graduate work. Talk to me about that. Uh, right now, I've applied to Northwestern University in uh, physical therapy, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, I'll be accepted there. Uh, if not, I may possibly just take a year to work and uh, kind of regroup, gather my uh, resume together, and reapply to some graduate schools. Must be nice to be able to go to school on scholarship. You play on scholarship, and uh, Get great grades, play basketball, have a chance to see another part of the country. It seems like a whole, a whole package that you managed to be talented enough to get. Yes, I really, uh, really have enjoyed the experience, and it's, uh, it's nice when things seem to be going my way right now before I get into the real world. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brett, thank you, and uh, good luck the rest right. of the way. We hope for big things for the Hounds in March. Thank you. Right across, we want to see a track captain for the Assumption Greyhounds, I guess, at halftime. We're back with first half half, first half stats, and a highlight for that. car needs brake work, don't take chances. These people should have taken their cars to American Brake Service. At American Brake Service, our ASC certified technicians use the latest technology to inspect and repair your brakes, usually in about an hour. And at American Brake Service, you'll get a lifetime guarantee and our unbeatable low prices. So no matter what you drive, don't take chances with your brakes. Bring them to American Brake Service. American Brake Service, stop in for a free brake inspection. Need money? No problem. Loan USA will loan you cash for your valuables. Gold and diamond jewelry, TVs, VCRs, cameras, musical instruments, and more. Loan USA will loan you more money for your valuables than any other area pawn shop and safeguard them for the term of the loan. It's quick, it's easy, it's secure. It's Loan USA, America's pawn shop. When you need money fast, you need Loan USA. 52 Chandler Street, Worcester. Nobody loans you more money. Nobody.
Dad had to look, Mr. Man, for up in the garage door opener for me. I only been driving for a couple of years. He's got the school safety reversing sensor. Something gets in the way while the door's going down, goes back up, all by itself. So tell your folks to call a professional, the LiftMaster Garage Door Opener Man. Come see the LiftMaster Garage Door Opener at Rainer Garage Door, 46 Milton Street, off of Gold Star Boulevard in Worcester. Empire is your wholesale connection for top quality leather furniture. We liquidate discontinued leather furniture and sell it for what other stores pay. We feature beautiful custom-built leather sofas from only $490. For the best value, come to Empire. Empire has great youth and teenage bedrooms. We feature top quality solid ash or maple bedrooms with quality draw construction. Our values are unbeatable. Solid ash bunks from $490 and $590. For the best values, come to Empire. Well, the assumption Lady Greyhounds uh, won the ball game earlier tonight, defeating the Quinnipiac Lady Braves 74 to 60, 23 points. And Stacy Mattioli, the uh, local product out of St. Peter Marion in Sturbridge, Mass. And the men now leading at halftime 38 to 36. 14 big points in the first half from Brett Krause. He had three three pointers. Here's one of the early ones, Ernie, and he uh, was uh, quite confident from deep. Boy, he was real confident, especially in the early going. Boy, he stepped up, had nice rotation follow through he did everything right he had some good results Krause as mentioned 14 points his team with a total of a 38 second on that scoring rundown for the Hounds eight points from Kurt Holden we'll see a highlight from Holden just a little bit but a marksman exists on the other side of uh, things too Joe Tremarkey from Quinnipiac he came in shooting at a clip of 40 percent from three he had a few threes uh, himself in the first half as a total of 10 points. This is actually a two-pointer. We'll uh, take a peek at a peek at, but uh, no doubt about it, he has some uh, range from outside. Well, especially for Julian, 6'4", right there on the baseline. Nice follow-through, arc on it, and uh, he's been a, a detrimental to uh, Quint, uh, to Assumption in the first half. Tremarkey with 10 points to lead the way. Miles Anderson off the bench with seven, six points for Ryan Brown. A total of 36 in that half. 38-36 Assumption. Up by two. Can't say enough about Krause, though. Also was very aggressive when he saw lanes to the basket. Took it strong to the hole when he had a chance. The three wasn't there, or if it was on a fast break, he would take it to the basket and uh, play with a lot of confidence. You saw the interview at halftime. Uh, he's known for his defense, but tonight it's offense. This is a perfect opportunity, as you can see, uh, Drew Cooper going in over, over to Krause. And Krause just saw the lane, exploded to it and um, comes down with confidence and comes down with the overall team effort. And uh, I think they feel a little, little uh, pride there coming into this game, and um, the results have been proven. Assumption trying to uh, continue a winning streak. They've won four in a row coming into this, trying to make it a five-game win streak. That is almost unheard of in the last few years <laughs> around here for the Hounds program. Not a great year, really, across the city for men's basketball. Holy Cross struggling. Assumption trying to be the one bright spot. And watch this last replay. As we mentioned, Kurt Hold missed alley -oop, but he will, will be there with the follow. Yeah, he did a good job. He's playing big in the, in the post position. Sometimes he's having some trouble, but he was able to stick with it that time and follow through, and he was able to pick up two points. Of course, Assumption playing without Steve St. Martin, the spirited sophomore, out with an injury still, though, leading by two, shooting at a good clip from the floor, 52%. Free throws they could improve on, just 33%. Rebounding wise, Assumption with the edge there in turnovers. Assumption with two more than Quinnipiac. Pretty clean first half in terms of turnovers. Went to very quickly in the first 12 minutes, slowed down a little bit late, and we're just about a minute and a half away from uh, half number two. Assumption coming in in the Northeast 10, tied for third place with Bentley and St. Anselm at eight and five. Quinnipiac, a couple notches down at four and nine, five and 15 overall. They come in, the Braves, they do with a, a two game there's a peek at the standings. St. Michael's, though, one of their two losses did come to Quinnipiac. So one of Quinnipiac's four wins uh, beat St. Mike's and also beat Assumption 79-74 back in January. So this team can get it done when its uh, act is all together. Oh, definitely. And that, to be exact, it was January 16th. And um, actually, Quinnipiac was on a seven-game losing streak 
and all of a sudden Sumption walked in there and um, didn't perform probably as well and they beat them so but at the same time speaking of streaks we mentioned earlier we can't say it enough Assumption right, right now on a four game winning streak and hopefully they can um, pull it out tonight. Interesting update uh, provided by our crack staff in the truck tonight. This is of uh, major interest to local basketball fans. High school action, Burncoat up 14 over Doherty. And high school action over on Highland Street. That's at Doherty's home gym. Wow. Burncoat has yet to lose to a local team. Just one loss in the top ranked right team in basketball, leading 57 43. Second half action, of course. Mike Garrett Foley is in at the uh, Newswatch 3 anchor desk tonight. He'll have all the great highlights from that game at about 10 15, 10 20 tonight, as well as the uh, final score but the score in this one 38 36 assumption leading quinnipiac by two points the hounds starting to put it all together as a program they do have a story a tradition especially uh back in the uh, 60s made some noise in the 70s as well even in the early 90s under jack rankins but then things went south until the lazarus at Alaska came into picture serge de barry who lives in nearby holden Earlier tonight, as we mentioned, the women winning 74 to 60. Stacy Mattioli, the uh, standout freshman, continues to put together some great numbers, 23 points. And the Hounds, the ladies program, trying to go over the 500 mark, 2 and 11 and 11. Both teams are building. Winnipiac uh, moving right to left this half. They're in the away blue uniforms. Assumption in the home and white unis. Assumption coming out, man to man pressure. One of Start out when they left off. Winnipiac going back to his starting lineup to begin the second half. Ryan Brown spinning on third hole. Hook shot up and over. Ties the game at 38. Strong pull. Maneuver down low in the paint area. And Quinnipiac means business coming into early going into the second half. Whistle away from the ball. We'll get a foul on Ryan Brown. He'll pick it up after the basket. I believe that's his second of the evening. First foul of half two. Well, Ryan is known to be relentless, not only on offense, but also on defense. He likes to mix it up. 6'7", 235, out of Watertown. Watertown, Connecticut, of course. Cooper, first jumper attempt. is out, no good. We're still tied at 38. Make that foul number two by the time Ryan Brown. He joins Melvin Miller in the three foul club. Those are the only two guys really in trouble at this point. Yeah, but both teams like to bang down on the low post position, so it's not over yet. You'll see a lot of banging down there. Between Kurt Hold and, uh, and Ryan. When it's yeah. Wicky and Johnson's face. Ryan Brown, two more. Ryan gets another chance, loses control, but it's Wicky, so he it away. Ryan Brown having a tough time on offense down there. Have to credit assumption. It's a good D. So Marky got a hand on it, and he forces the turnover. Krause can't control it. Clock stopped at 18:36. One bucket so far as half just won. It was a brave uh, basket to tie at 38. Well, both teams are with that intensive defense. Both teams are getting in the passing lane, getting their hands on the ball, disrupting uh, each other's offense. Still a pretty much even contest between both of them. But if I was assumption. I'll try my best to try to break away and get some, uh, try to get a good lead here. It's Wicky's going to get whistled for the personal. His second. Deep on assumption. Well, the good first coach chose DeSantis, of course, for uh, Quinnipiac. He says the key to the season will be the play of the point guard position, finding somebody to step up and contribute in the front line with Brown. Miles Anderson, fair work on the Smith Eliapes from the elbow, no good. Rebound Kurt Hall. DeSantis in his first season, he will be part of the transition to Division I basketball. Not next season, but the year after. You gotta be happy about that. Quinnipiac will uh, join the Northeast Conference, not to be confused with the Northeast 10 Conference. That is a Division II Conference they currently play in with Assumption, but a few years from now, they'll group to the Northeast Conference. Yeah, that will comprise of teams from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. That should be pretty interesting. Cooper baseline, short, Holt gets a hand on it, but it goes to Tremarki, and Quinnipiac with the basketball. Still modded up at 38 apiece. Well, also, um, Quinnipiac has been known in the U.S. News and been quoted in World Report, uh, naming the institution as one of America's best colleges. So what they wanted to do is uh, that was part of one of the reasons why they wanted to bring the basketball level up there. They're known for their education, so they wanted to be up there with the basketball as well. 
Fourth turnover, relatively low number for a Quinnipiac so far tonight. Back to assumption though. I'll get the chance to go ahead. Grousey up fakes his man and pops from three. Brett Grousey, fourth three of the night, three point eight fouls. Talk about that song. Boy, he's been looking really good with that shot. He's been getting some good looks and he's been taking it. And no one from Quinnipiac has stepped up and said, hey, I'm gonna stop this guy. They've been letting him dial up and he's been making the connection. And that's a foul on Nitwicki. An incredulous end in Nitwicki. Finds it hard to believe that he was uh, guilty. But he was number three. Along with Melvin Miller. Two assumption players with three fouls now. Andy Nitwicki and Miller. And Zelke will come in as Andy takes a seat. It seems once again that a lot of the action is taking place down in the paint area. And you'll notice right down there when you get an opportunity, he takes a seat and he's not very happy about it. But you're going to get another chance to get back out there, fella. Don't worry about it. Get out there again. But if you look at the paint area, John, that's where all the action is taking place. Anderson in the paint right now. Gets it to spin around and fall. Cutting the lead to one. Miles Anderson with nine now. Big shot by Anderson with the fall away. Oh, to Zelke. Splitting the defense. Josh Zelke with four at two in the first half. Two now at half two. Freshman doing the job down low. This is going to come down to a muscle game. I really believe down in the paint area, I have to emphasize that again. Who's going to come up with the muscle down low? Johnson. Trying to feed it inside. Zelke gets a knee on it out of bounds. They'll reset the shot clock to 35 in men's college basketball. Just 30 in the women's game. I'll tell you, the Lady Hound uh, trailer is getting uh, hammered down there. That's the third time that Dangerous the spot. You need insurance if you're going to camp out down there. It's the third time the ball hit somebody down there in the field of the park. Look at the tight pressure assumption is possessing out there. Lyapes did get around Selke, and Assumption will be guilty of a foul. When you're playing that tight, it's a perfect opportunity to go back door. All you do is run fake left and go right, or go right and go left. Uh, Got to lose that guy somehow. First personal on Selke, 13 pull on Assumption. Now a we'll whistle the other way. A hold. Going against uh, Fairworth. Or Quinnipiac. Coach DeSantis looks on. His team down 340-340. Wasn't a smart play right there, for, especially for Quinnipiac. They just turned the ball over, taking the ball out of bounds. Cooper decides to go to the basket strong and uh, try to earn some points that way. But at the same time, he's going to uh, sacrifice his body and he's pulling his jersey up the same way. That was smart. Maybe I should stay on the outside and shoot. <laughs> I'm not going to go down low any again. Second personal foul. Cooper with two at the line. Chance to push the lead to five. Has it at four now. Drew Cooper been a little quiet tonight. Just with five points. Leads this sound team of the season. 18 a game off the bench. Co-player of the week in the NE10 last week. Has been red hot lately. Drew. Well, speaking of the NE10, don't forget, John, the playoffs are right around the corner in February 24th. The top four seeds host in the quarterfinal game. Pretty supportive, obviously, for Assumption to try to get that third place spot all alone so they can host one of those uh, early games. That would be pretty interesting. March Madness, can you believe it, right around the corner. Seventh turnover on Quinnipiac. They trail it by a handful, 45 40 as we uh, check out the replay. Quinnipiac penetrating on the baseline, trying to kick it out to somebody in three point range. Nobody's there. Johnson will strip it from Erickson. Here we go. Two on two performance. Defense catching up. And a blocking foul on Brock Erickson. A little bit frustrated after he had turned over. Brock Erickson trying to get back on defense. He's getting beat right now, but this time, trying to slow it down. He recoups, recovers, and that time they off the lock. Jumper from Lyapak is good. Two point shot, make it 45 of 42. Nick Lyapak has five. That guy's tough, 6'2, 190. Guard. One of the tri captains, savvy player. Rousey. 
When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. You got it, you got it. Good three-pointer for Grossi. And Asamsa gets it right back. Quick shot. Coming from Lyabex, 48-42 Hounds. Grousey, the man tonight with 20 now. Selke, yes, underneath. Looks Maybe like a time out of the way from Quinnipiac. Yes, we are going to get a T.O. <laughs> Johnson calling for it. Just a brief 20-second timeout. Just under 15 minutes to play, 50-42. to 42. How about Krause, Ernie? 20 points. Came in averaging 11.9 a game. The captain out of Wisconsin. Boy, don't laugh at the cheese head tonight. <laughs> get you for it. Uh, that all, that all, look at the look away fast there. He's fighting for it, trying to get this to it. It was a miss right there. He goes back up there strong, follows it up again. And um, he's winning the board. I tell you, that's where the contest is going to be won, down at the boards. In that particular time, Josh Selke was able to go back up strong, the first year player. Doubleheader duty for Ernie Floyd this weekend. He'll be joined by Gary Tangway on Saturday. Lafayette and Holy Cross, the women and the men, 1 o'clock for the ladies, 3.30 for the men. Good college basketball, Patriot League style from the Heart Center on Saturday. And uh, turn that around, actually. The men will actually play first. And Gentlemen before ladies on yeah, Saturday. Exactly. Well, the real men, men is going gonna, is gonna to play uh, Saturday. It's the alumni game. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the real men that's going to Thankfully, play. that will not be broadcast on Channel 3. I, I, I just want to let viewers know now, rest at ease. We will not show you. We may be able to get some highlights over Ernie Floyd to pass along at halftime on Saturday, but it won't be broadcast live. Those are the real men. I'm going to show you how the game really plays. <laughs> Something with its biggest lead. Oh. Ten points. Biggest of the night as Kurt Holt makes it 52 42. The hoop and the heart. Kurt Holes getting into the action too. The junior showing how 6'10 could be an advantage. Putting his arm out there, locks on the block, goes strong to the glass, and he gets hacked in the act. And Kurt Holes shows a strong presence down low on the block. Hole trying to complete the three point play. Not great from the line at 62%, but let's see if he can. Concentrate, take his time, and bury it, yes. Oh, he's gonna lead on that one. It's at 11, 53, 42, hold. Double digits tonight. He now has a total of 11 points. Well, this is exactly what Assumption was looking for. They were matching basket for basket for the first half, and also coming into the second half. Three-point shot from Lyapes, brings an 8 run from Assumption. Lyapes. It was uh, Tremarkey in the first half. Now it's Nick Lyapes. The go-to guy for Quinnipiac in half two. Presumption well, had to put on a streak. Oh, nice shot by Hole. Hole the last five for the Hounds. Lead back to 10-55-45. Oh, out of control is uh, Ivers. He's trying to do it all, but he does uh, get the whistle for all the foul against Assumption. Oh, he saw gold in his eyes as he put his head down and it all the way. And actually what happened was, uh, let him out. Josh let him out of that situation. That was a situation where he was kind of falling out, getting out of control. Josh should have just let him go. Zelke with his second 15 ball this half. Officials, officials time out. 13.52 to go. Half two. Assumption looking good. 55-45. You're watching local college basketball on WGMC TV3. Hmm, home heating oil prices. I just can't figure them out. Discount oil dealers offer low prices, but if I need service, I'll be on the cold. Full service companies offer the service I depend on, but charge 10 to 20 cents more per gallon. Superior Oil offers the best of both worlds. Fair prices that are always competitive and dependable service and convenience. Superior Oil provides automatic delivery, oil pricing programs, fit your budget, and licensed service technicians on call 24 hours a day. Dependable service at discount prices, that's Superior Oil. Back in Alaska, John Holt with uh, Ernie Floyd on this Tuesday evening in Central Massachusetts. And the uh, hometown guys, the good guys, leading this one 55 45. Kurt Holt has uh, been the man of the minute lately. Well, here's the answering basket by Kurt Holt. Well, he turned left, came around, did a little nice hook jumper down there on the baseline. And something had to put on a quick run. Prior to that, they were on an eight point run. And um, that time they were, come, they were able to come back with uh, cap on two points. Hold with 13. Krause with 20 to lead the house. Drew Cooper with just six, but it's needed up 10. Yeah, you can't trust Quinnipiac because Quinnipiac has some outside threats, and uh, you got to get a good lead on these guys. You never know when these guys can nail them and knock them down. Johnson, no good. Brown the board over hold for two. Ryan Brown, solid rebounder. 
Brian Brown playing streaks though tonight. Oh, he's doing a great job. He started in about 24 games and played in all 27 last year. Bearworth picks it off. Lyup is trying to steal it, and he stepped on the sideline back to Assumption. Don't want to get sloppy, of course. I'll bait here. This is a situation where the Assumption just take their time. They got the lead. Set up into a nice half-court offense. Take some time off the clock. Slow things down a little bit. Andy Nizwicki back in the game along with his three personal fouls. Brock Erickson takes the seat. Nizwicki joined by Krause, Cole, and Miller. And it's a carrying violation by Nizwicki. <laughs> Cooper's the other guy in the ribbon, but it doesn't much matter who you have uh, with you on offense if you're going to carry the basketball. Yeah, that's unfortunate because uh, it seems as though well Assumption goes into the streaks again. It seems as though they're in control. They, they do the right things, and all of a sudden, unexpectedly, they start doing stupid things. I can't understand it sometimes. It's almost like they're, they're, they are their own worst enemy. Johnson inside, Brian Brown. He hasn't just scored two. He usually scores about four points. You want to hear from him about 10 minutes, he'll get four more. <laughs> Brown has 12 now. Three sets of four. Well, that's probably one of the problems coming back with this team because uh, this team returns about six people. It's a young team. And, uh, of course, Coach DeSantis is uh, the fifth coach in the college's history at Columbia. Cooper stepped out of bounds as he tried to save the basketball. Right now it's 55-49, half dozen point lead for Assumption. 22nd timeout. Coming from Serge to Barry. Just wants to reel things in a little bit before uh, Quinnipiac is back in this one and tied up. And it was a 10 point lead. In fact, Assumption had it up to 11 at one point here in the second half. It's down to six right now. Well, he's recognizing the fact that he spoke to the team and hey, look, these are different things that's going to give us the lead, get us up there and we can take this game. But at the same time, you're doing the other different things that's going to put us in trouble. So this concentrate and do the good thing. 35th meeting between the two schools. Assumption College leading the series 19 to 15. Quinnipiac, though, with the upper hand this season, that win back in January by a handful, 79-74, down in Hammond, Connecticut, home of the Braves. Quinnipiac going Division One pretty soon. Obviously, they will upgrade their personnel when they do that. Playing in Division II right now, but Coach DeSantis will recruit a different level of athlete to play in the Northeast Conference. Well, he meant no offense to these guys. Oh, no, not at all. He has some big time experience, though. Been in Division I uh, experience for 15 years. Tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with Bolivia. Locks down to 12 26. Shot clock is 13 seconds. He was an advanced scout for the Detroit Pistons, so he's been around St. John's in New York College. So he's had some experience with some big time program. Life is trying to keep it alive off his knee. Shot clock down to three. Johnson's going to have to stop and pop from deep. Play short over to Assumption. Good defense, not allowing the open shot. Right now, Quinnipiac is obviously is getting tired. They're breaking down. They really don't go that deep on, into their bench. So Assumption right now has the time, has the ball, just has to play it smart, try to increase the lead. They can possibly take this one tonight, increase their, uh, their winning streak to five. Rousey going to draw some contact. Foul on Lyafez. Uh, shooting situation. Third foul on Lyafez. Team foul. Number six, one away from the bonus is Assumption. One more Quinnipiac foul, and it'll be one and one the rest of the way. Bring the St. Martin's father out there, and uh, he was disappointed the fact that his son wasn't playing as well. But he says it was a bruise up by his chest, by his ribs. And uh, someone else was saying, well, he must lead the country in uh, hitting the floor a lot, and that's what the price you pay. <laughs> hitting the floor those many times. Turnover to Quinnipiac. Lyapis has left the game in favor of Andrew McKenzie, the sophomore, coming off the bench. Steve also told me he's just been trying to beat uh, Mother Nature for a week and a half or so, battling this injury, and finally had to give in. Miss a game tonight. Brown, right-handed hook. Nice looking, ooh, looked like an NBA move. Nice jump hook by Ryan Brown. He's doing some damage out there. There's a little bit of uh, baseball, I believe, as well. Star pitcher for the Braves. Last six points for Quinnipiac. Has him within four, 55-51. It was 55-45 for Brown with the last half dozen. And for Marquis, 
going to be called for the seventh personal foul, team foul rather. Take a look at the final tonight, Ernie. It's in the Patriots. Boy, are they headed to a state title, or who knows? They beat Doherty convincingly tonight in the Highlanders' gym, winning by 8, 75, 67. A thanks to a Tim Young and John Grady down in the truck for tracking that game all night. Was that, that was that Doherty? That's a big game. It was uh, number one versus number two in the local uh, top ten. About 4,000 people would have loved to have seen that game. They can only fit 400 in the gym, so what you missed, you'll see tonight on Newswatch 3 Live. It's in the highlights of that ball game. There's Wiki making a free throw. Lead back up to 5, 56, 51. Andy now with five on the night. He must have had some type of performance. Who's the big guy over at Doherty? They got a number of players. Eddie Brown, one of their guards, a real good player. Will Hampton inside, Will Hampton. sophomore. Yeah. Brother of uh, Larry Hampton, I believe, who is a local playground legend. Also uh, one of the better high school players to come out of the area recently. And he cannot make the second lead, stays at five. 11.15 to play. Miller uh, picked up the fouls, his fourth team foul. He's right back to the bench. Erickson into the game. Pressure from Assumption in the backcourt. That's funny, in the last few broadcasts, we didn't see Assumption press as much, but now it seems like they're demonstrating that. Fourth full court, flying that press. Good rotation, talking on defense. A lot of communication out there. Doesn't spin around for Johnson. Cooper the rebound. Erickson will slow it down. Wait for his teammates. Right now, Quinnipiac is putting on the man-to-man -man pressure, trying to slow things down. They know something's trying to get away from them. And of course, Quinnipiac want to keep the game close and tight. Now allowing this lead to get out of hand. Erickson. Will advise pass inside. It's Andy from Cooper. Out of bounds. To Quinnipiac. Coming right at you. Here's a situation where the ball's coming. Whoa, first hand. Uh, Cooper couldn't get there. Would have been a perfect pass if it was intended for our cameraman tonight. Uh, Bill Jackson instead. And it goes out of bounds. Well, Bill Jackson's known to have good hands, too. Bill, uh, not normally our cameraman. So, one of the production big wigs over at GMC, but filling in tonight on camera. Well, he's obviously enjoying himself. Bill Jackson's getting down and dirty, huh? Rossi must know someone for that for Rossi. Winnipeg is at the line, one-on-one -on -one situation for Johnson. There's a shot of Bill. Johnson will get a second lead down to four, 56-52. Johnson is known as a tough, smart, fundamentally sound player. Consistent outside shooter, excellent defender. Both of them dropping through seven for Johnson on the night. We have a three-point game. Good one with 10.25 to go. Plus, Quinnipiac's going to have to turn up the heat on defense. Sumption doing a good job on offense. Cooper didn't know what he wanted to do. Almost dragged his foot with the travel. Instead, he'll get the foul. Looked like he wanted to drive and come back out for a short jumper. Looked like he was going places. And his assumption on the giddy up. And all of a sudden, uh, Cooper, oh, he saw, he saw Ryan Brown there. Ryan Brown says, get that stuff out of here. And all of a sudden, there's a foul on the play. So the big guy is going to the free throw line. The big people for Assumption have been doing the job tonight. They've been doing a pretty decent job down in the post area. Kurt Hole's been doing good. Bruins has been doing a good job. And Seth going to the line for one. Ugly looking first shot. Doesn't drop. Quinnipiac can tie it with a three. Tremarkey's in the game. He's a three-point specialist. Instead, it's McKenzie going up. Getting the foul. Could be a, one of the two different people for Assumption. I think they're going to get Zelke. Well, here's McKenzie. McKenzie is also a, a compliment to Rich Johnson, who was at the line earlier. He tries to shoot from the, the baseline, and he's one of the contributing guards for this team. Great free throw shooter. Outside threat, good defensively, and solid uh, fundamentally sound in the skill department. McKenzie makes the first of two. We're down to a two-point edge for Assumption. It has been whittled down from 11. This half 56 54 follows on Zelke. His third he remains in the game with those three fouls. No good in the second hold the rebound. Seems though Kubiak just creeps back in this game. Assumption just had a big lead. What happened? It's Wiki trying to bounce that lead back up. Three pointer for Andy 59 54. Quinnipiac just creeps back in slowly, and Assumption is working hard to try to sustain that lead. 
Defense. Defense coming up for the Assumption cheerleaders. Assumption does a big job on hand-to-hand -hand pressure. Quinnipiac just trying to find themselves on offense. They don't have anything set up in particular. Just trying to find somebody free. Down of four, and it's a steal by Erickson. Can't keep it alive, though. Out of bounds on the sideline. Good attempt. As the shot clock is winding down, Quinnipiac was in trouble, but they'll get a reset on it. Quinnipiac was confused on, uh, on offense a little bit. Great effort by something here, and uh, able to come up with a steal. Stop the threat temporarily, at least for a little bit. They will not get that reset. I take that back. Just two seconds on the shot clock. It's going to have to be a quick one. Here's Brown from the elbow. No. No robo. Our statistician right on top of that. There was no possession in that loose ball that Harrison received, so the shot clock was not reset. Quinnipiac still in man-to-man -man pressure. Haven't demonstrated any zones tonight or any switching to that effect on defense. Both teams are playing straight up. Playing real basketball. Contact, Patchen got in the way of Drew Cooper. And Mr. Cooper is uh, headed to the free throw line. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. How about that? You don't think I watch TV or anything? You think I'm just a news hound, huh? News and sports hound? Well, I know that you were uh, burning the candle at both ends there. And, uh, I guess it's true. I heard about it. Read about it. Now get to hear about it. Yeah. Five point edge at this juncture, 8.57 to go. Cooper will get a one and one. Got to nail the first to earn the second. Does it? Well, it seems like 20 tech, like I said earlier, it's just wearing down. They really don't go that deep on the bench. Got a young team here, first year coach. Uh, the fifth coach out of the school's 46 year history. 